uh, I would like to cover what are the key requirements uh, that we need to consider when implementing a uh, open banking architecture, what are the API management requirements, security requirements, and uh, functional and uh, uh, operational requirements likewise. And uh, while going through all these key requirements, uh, I would like to take you through a few uh, examples from different regions, how they have met uh, these requirements. And uh, with all of that, uh, I would like to show you uh, how the W is going to uh, W2 as an open banking solution provider how we help banks to uh, meet these requirements. So, um, as you see in the screen, uh, uh, I have listed a few uh, specifications and standards uh, from different regions. Uh, these uh, standards, uh, uh, they, they have evolved for a long time and they have uh, gathered a lot of experience. And uh, so because of that, uh, it would be really good uh, if we consider these uh, specific standards also when considering a uh, successful open banking architecture for the Singapore as well. Um, so our main objective is uh, to uh, expose the existing uh, banking uh, data and services to the uh, external parties uh, in a secured manner. Uh, so then the uh, external third parties can uh, consume those APIs and uh, develop new uh, services to their customers. So, however, it is not just the uh, expose an API and implement in a security layer. Uh, we need to think about, there are a lot of other uh, requirements also around this uh, area. So we need to think about uh, all of those when uh, thinking about the uh, open banking architecture. So uh, let's look at uh, what are those key requirements. Um, first of all, uh, definitely we need to have an API specification um, that is to uh, expose the internal banking data to the external parties uh, in a standardized manner. So with that, we need to think about how we ensure the uh, API security uh, for uh, the strict uh, accessing uh, uh, we can't let uh, anyone to come and access our API specification, so definitely we should think about how we secure those APIs. And uh, with that, then uh, uh, exposing some uh, banking data to the external parties, especially when we are uh, sharing the uh, customer data, we need to think about uh, uh, how we uh, uh, we can't just expose the customer data to the outside, so we need to get the customer consent. So in order to get the consent, we need to properly uh, identify, authenticate the customer and get the consent and store it in a proper manner. So we need to think about uh, uh, how the open banking platform support those capabilities. And uh, uh, when, uh, when a third party come and uh, try to access our exposed APIs, uh, uh, there should be a proper post process that the third parties can come and on board with the bank. Uh, so uh, so the, our open banking platform needs to provide uh, that requirement as well. Uh, exposing an API means uh, definitely uh, we need to get the data from the existing banking systems. So. Uh, we need to think about uh, uh, how we can uh, integrate those data uh, to the APIs and expose this to the uh, outside. And uh, within this open banking ecosystem, uh, we can see there are a number of uh, users, like uh, banking users, uh, bank staff, you know, banking customers, uh, bank staff, and the third party application mainly. And uh, those users can be besides in different user stores. So we need to think about how we can uh, easily integrate those user stores to this platform. And uh, with all of this, uh, we need to, uh, we want to analyze the data that is passing through this uh, open banking platform. Uh, uh, we, we want to see how our APIs are performing and 
if it is not according to the standard level they will then we need to uh, improve those and uh, we need to think of we need to look into the data and uh, we need to uh, uh, data and we need to identify what are the business insights to improve our business and uh, if there are any frauds happening there should be a way to detect those and uh, we need to uh, generate some reports uh, to different parties like uh, bank management third parties so likewise and uh, with all of these we need to think about how would be the customer experience uh, if it is not met according to the uh, expect uh, bank customer expectation so no one will come and use our uh, products and services that we expose to the open banking platform and um, we need to think about uh, operational requirements as well like how we uh, achieve the high availability uh, performance and if any problem occur then how we resolve it uh, and if, if we want to update this open banking platform how we do it uh, without affecting to the third parties. So uh, we need to think about all these uh, requirements. Uh, so I will go through uh, uh, each, each requirement one by one. And while going through this, I will take you through some uh, uh, examples from different regions. And I will show how the WS Open Banking Solution uh, have developed these uh, requirements. Uh, first thing is definitely we should uh, have a, a good, proper API specification to uh, expose the data to the outside. Um, so uh, they are so uh, when defining the APIs, there can be open APIs and as well as the secured APIs. Uh, as an example, uh, let's say the bank want to expose the ATM locations, branch locations, exchange rate, interest rate, like that. So. Uh, we can allow, we can define those as an open API and allow anyone to come and uh, access those information. Uh, but let's say if we want to uh, expose the uh, account information of a customer or we, if we want to provide the uh, payment service, so then uh, definitely we need to expose this API as a secured API. So uh, let's look at uh, uh, how the different uh, regions have exposed different APIs. Um, uh, so this is our WS2 Open Banking solution and uh, the API store of the WS2 Open Banking solution, there I have published two APIs uh, uh, from different regions. Uh, this is the open API. Uh, if you go into it, you can see it uh, It has some uh, API resources to expose the branch details, ATMs, and products, likewise. And uh, if you go into this uh, account information API, uh, uh, this API is have, uh, designed to expose the account information. Uh, this is according to the open banking of the QK specification. This is how the API have structured. So you can see what are the data that they have exposed. Um, and this is also a uh, account API, uh, the API to expose the account information. Uh, this is uh, this is according to the Australia CDR specification. Uh, so before moving on to the other key requirements, uh, let's uh, uh, let's look at a popular use case of uh, how to share the account information of a particular customer with the uh, external third party. So uh, this is the AISP application. Uh, uh, this is a sample application. Uh, uh, what this application does is it connect to the different banks and expose their uh, APIs, uh, it consume the APIs that is exposed by different uh, banks and uh, get the customer information, aggregate it and present it to the uh, user in a presentable manner. So I am logging this application um, as a bank user. 
so when I log in it, I can see uh, my account details from the DC Bank, Development Bank, likewise, and the trans aggregated transactions, standing orders, uh, cash uh, balance. The cash and credit balances and now I want to add another bank account from a different bank so I'm click on the add bank and there it lists the what is the bank that I want to uh, bank from which bank I want to uh, add the account so I am selecting the citizen bank so when I'm sharing my account information with this uh, application uh, we need to uh, give my consent to the bank to uh, share, share the information. So the so then the app, uh, AISP application redirect me to the uh, bank portal uh, to get uh, first the bank need to uh, authenticate me as a bank user and uh, I should give the consent. So I'm logging uh, as a bank user to the Citizen Bank authentication portal. And they are, it prompts me the second factor authentication, uh, and then it prompts me the uh, consent page to get my consent to share my uh, account information with this uh, bank. So I'm selecting my accounts and I'm giving the consent. So then again, I will uh, I'm redirecting to the uh, AISP application again. So if you go into this account section, now you can see the citizen bank accounts also have added and the transactions standing orders are also have updated uh, with them. So that's how the uh, sharing account information uh, that, that popular use case is working. Um, so let's look at uh, how it actually happened. What are the API calls that actually happened uh, underneath? Um, so this is the bank user and uh, he uh, he come and log into this AISP application and uh, when he wants to uh, add another uh, account uh, from uh, from this bank the first this application invoke the token API uh, of this bank and get the application based token and then uh, it make another request uh, it make a account initiation request. That request says, uh, I want to access these, these, these information uh, from this bank. So then the bank acknowledge it and generate ID and send it back to the uh, AISP application. And then, uh, then the next step is we need to uh, uh, take uh, uh, redirect user to the bank authentication portal and get the user consent. So then uh, this application invoke the authorized API of this bank and that API will redirect the customer to the uh, login page and they are the user gives the first factor and the second factor and then uh, uh, the bank prompts to get the customer consent. So once the user gives the cons consent uh, the bank generate the authorization code and uh, uh, send it back to the AISP application. So then this AISP application again involve the token API of this uh, bank uh, and exchange the authorization code to a user-based access token. And then with that token, uh, it involved the account information API which is exposed in this bank to get the account information of this customer. So that's how the uh, how the AISP application take, uh, get the account information uh, of this customer from this bank. So likewise, this uh, AISP application uh, uh, invoke the APIs of all the other banks and uh, get the customer information and aggregate those and present it to the user. Uh, so let's look at what are the uh, security uh, requirements, uh, security capabilities that is required to uh, implement this flow. Uh, the first thing is API security. When, uh, as you see on the above slide, uh, in, whenever we want to access the API, uh, we need to get the uh, token. So uh, if you look at a uh, UK specification or and the Australia 3D specification, they are mainly talk about O2 base uh, access token. And um, 
when they implementing the uh, token based security they are mainly they have considered O2 OIDC and PARP specification and if you look at the Europe side uh, they are mainly talk about certificate based access token uh, uh, they when the so the third parties will invoke the APIs with the EI DAS certificate and uh, the next security capability we should have is the strong customer authentication. So in order to uh, get the user consent, uh, we need to strongly identify the uh, customer. So uh, uh, it is said that uh, in order to uh, identify, the, uh, authenticate the user strongly, we should have at least two factors from uh, these three. Uh, so as you see in the demo, uh, we, uh, we uh, follow the basic authentication and the SMS authentication uh, to identify the customer, but uh, in uh, different banks, uh, we might require different uh, authenticators like uh, fingerprints, uh, voice recognition, WASC uh, uh, authenticators, uh, kind, kind of uh, different authentication factors they uh, might need to use. So we, when we are thinking about a platform, we need to uh, see how uh, easily we can uh, integrate those different authentication factors also with this platform. And, uh, and the other things we need to consider is what is the approach that we uh, use uh, when uh, uh, taking the, uh, authenticating the user and get the consent from the user. So uh, as you see on the uh, demo, uh, we redirect the uh, AI bank user from the AISP application to the bank and they are the user gave the consent and again we redirect the uh, user to the AISP application. So that is the uh, redirect approach and uh, some banks use, us, use the decoupled approach uh, that is uh, AISP application does not redirect to any bank portal uh, but it make a back channel call to the bank and uh, uh, then the bank uh, do a bank uh, call to the user and the user consent. Uh, maybe we are a, a mobile application and uh, once the user gives the consent, then uh, bank provides the uh, information to the application. So those are the widely used uh, approaches uh, when uh, implementing the strong custom authentication and consent flows. Um, in different regions. Uh, apart from that, there are a few more approaches like uh, mixed approach, embedded approach, and the delegated approach. Um, so when thinking about open banking platform, we need to think about uh, how easily we can, uh, what is the approach that the bank use and how easily we can implement these approaches within the platform as well. And um, when, uh, Talking about the strong customer authentication, the, another thing that we need to think about is the uh, transaction risk analysis. Uh, let's say the bank user uh, doing a payment transaction. So every time when uh, he wants to make a transaction, he, he needs to get, go through the, all the authentication factors uh, to get authenticated. Uh, but uh, every time uh, if we have to go through all the authentication, that can be a uh, bad user experience for the end user. So there should be a way uh, we can analyze the risk of the transaction and uh, exempt the uh, second factor uh, based on those uh, analysis. And so that will ex improve the user experience of the uh, end user. Uh, so when uh, thinking about open banking platform, uh, we need to think about these things also. And uh, if you already have a transaction risk analysis uh, uh, solution in your bank, so there should we need to think uh, whether we can integrate that system to this platform. So then uh, we can reduce the cost uh, that involves uh, in buying an uh, open banking platform for your bank. Um, so uh, once the user is authenticated properly, then the next thing is to uh, is we need to get the uh, user consent. Um, so uh, user consent uh, means uh, it is we give a uh, end user to uh, we give authority to the end users to control their uh, financial data 
uh, in terms of with whom um, they are sharing and for what purposes and uh, and for what period. So they are should the open banking platform should provide a way to collect those uh, user consent details and store it in a proper manner and uh, verify uh, when uh, uh, sharing those uh, information with the uh, third parties. At the same time, uh, there should be a proper way to revoke these consents whenever a user wants to revoke the already given consent, there should, that platform should have that capability as well. So, uh, in a, if we look at the different regions, uh, 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 they, they, are, they have identified three uh, ways of uh, how to revoke the user consents. One, is, one option is uh, a bank can uh, expose an uh, user interface so uh, to, for the bank uh, customers to come and log in into it and uh, revoke the consent by themselves. And uh, a second option is the bank users can come to the bank and uh, uh, ask the bank customer care officer to revoke the consent on behalf of him. Um, and the third option is bank can expose an uh, API uh, so the third party applications can uh, uh, provide the consent revocation op option through their application. So uh, let's look at the consent revocation capabilities that uh, the WS2 Open Banking solution have provided. Um, so this is the uh, interface that the bank can uh, provide to the bank users to come and log in and uh, revoke the consent by themselves. So I'm um, uh, logging to this application as a bank user. So it takes me through the uh, uh, strong custom authentication steps and it prompts the uh, consents that I have given. So if we go into the account consents, you can see what are the consents that I have given. And uh, if you want to revoke one, you can click here and revoke. Uh, if we look at the payment consents, uh, it, uh, you can see all the details are provided, uh, what are the consents that I have given. Uh, and, but there's no a revoke option. So that means that once the payment is done, uh, no point of providing, uh, uh, no point of revoking it. Uh, so that's, this is the uh, UI that uh, we have provided for the bank users. And uh, this is the uh, uh, UI uh, that we have uh, provided for the customer care officer. When the bank user wants to come to the bank and ask the uh, bank to revoke the consent on behalf of them. Uh, so this is the portal that the customer care officer can use. So I'm logging it as a uh, customer care officer. Uh, so it provides an interface uh, to search and uh, review the user consent. So here you can see the consents that uh, this Henry George have given. And uh, if you want to revoke, so you, there is a revoke button for that. And um, the third option is uh, giving a, a API for the third party users to uh, import that API and revoke the consent. So if you go into the Open Banking Offer UK uh, account information API, uh, you can see uh, they have given a delete API to uh, delete the consents given. So, uh, so those are the main uh, security and uh, consent related capabilities that we need to have uh, within the open banking platform. Uh, so the next thing is the third party on board. So that means uh, whenever a bank exports the API, uh, the third party application developers just can't just come and uh, start using those APIs. They need to uh, properly on board with the bank. So. Uh, we have identified a number of ways that different banks uh, do the onboarding process. So the first thing is uh, 
filling a sign up form uh, so the bank provider uh, sign up form and we, in the third party come and uh, fill the form and provide his details so uh, once the sign up request received by the bank um, the first option uh, received by the banks some banks want to uh, verify the third party automatically and uh, provide the uh, login credentials to that third party. So uh, they want to have a fully automatic process to verify the third parties. And uh, some banks want to uh, have the human interaction when, uh, uh, when onboarding a third party where someone uh, will pick and uh, review all the third party information and then approve uh, him to uh, use the APIs. And uh, if you look at the uh, UK side uh, or the Europe side, they onboard the third parties via a directory service. So uh, they, they have uh, exposed the directory service uh, so the third parties and as well as the banks come and uh, register with that service. So when a bank register with that uh, directory service, bank provide the what are the endpoints that they have so when the TPP register with this direct service TPP can uh, search and find the banks that you want to integrate so uh, they are they can uh, find what are the endpoints and uh, directory service provides some kind of a key a certificate uh, or uh, some kind of uh, key with that third party uh, involve the API source in the bank so once the uh, once the request received by the bank, bank will uh, again talk to the directory service and verify the third party. And uh, if the verification process is passed, the bank allowed to uh, order to access the API. That's how the third party onboarding uh, capabilities uh, can be provided through the open banking platform. Um, uh, actually, the WS2 Open Banking solution can uh, provide all these uh, types of onboarding processes, but I am not going to uh, demo it because uh, we don't need much time. We know that we don't have much time. So, uh, however, let's uh, look at uh, what are the uh, capabilities that the WS2 Open Banking solution have provided for the third-party application developers. Uh, so uh, this is the API store of WS2 Open Banking solution. This is where the third parties come and uh, search the APIs. So if they identify that uh, the bank is provided the APIs that he required to implement their services, the first thing is he needs to onboard. So this is the sign up form that uh, we have provided. Uh, this form is uh, fully customizable, so if uh, any bank wants to change it accordingly, that can be done. Uh, so once the sign-up process completes, uh, the next thing is uh, uh, the TPP, third-party application developer, can uh, log into it, this application. So I'm logging as a third-party application developer. So uh, then he will uh, create the application uh, and uh, subscribe to all the APIs that he want to access. And uh, here he can uh, generate the sandbox keys to generate the access tokens, uh, consume key and secret to generate the access token. We have given the information also how to, uh, what are the, how they can access, generate the tokens. And uh, once the sandbox testing is completed, and only a third party uh, move to start uh, production APIs. So for the production APIs, uh, the third party need to generate this separate set of keys. So this UI provides that capability. Uh, and apart from that, uh, we uh, provide some analytics to the application developers. Um, so as you see in the screen, uh, we provide uh, what you can the third party application developer can see how is the API usage per application and uh, uh, how much of monetization cost that he need to uh, uh, pay uh, 
based on this information uh, and uh, he can see how uh, how his application popular among the users and uh, what are the top users uh, using his application um, and uh, there we provide uh, some faulty invocation uh, information so if there is some faulty invocation that means that something has gone wrong so the uh, third party application developers can uh, talk to the bank and see how these things can be improved. Uh, apart from that, uh, we provide some alerting capability if uh, anything uh, goes wrong, uh, that the third party uh, application developer can configure these alerts to get notified via an email. Um, so, those are the uh, uh, capabilities that we have provided to the, uh, to the API developers. Um, and then uh, let's look at what are the capabilities that we have provided for the API developers. The API developers are the bank staff. So they are the one who design and develop the APIs and uh, expose it to the outside. Uh, so uh, for that, we have provided a separate UI that we call the API publisher. So I'm uh, logging in as a uh, API uh, developer. Uh, so this is the UI. So there you can see the APIs that I have uh, created and published. Uh, if you want to create a new API, we have provided four options. Uh, so if you have a Swagger file uh, with the API specification, uh, so you can start uh, that creating that API uh, following this option. And uh, if your core banking system exposes the source endpoint, so uh, you can uh, use this option to create that API. And uh, if you want to uh, design the API from the scratch, so this is the option for you. Uh, and uh, if you have a WebSocket API, you can start it, uh, start creating it from this option. So uh, let's go into one already created uh, API. Uh, if you go into the overview section, it explains uh, how the API information, what are the production and sandbox URLs that we have configured for this API. And uh, in lifecycle section, uh, this gives you a uh, you can control the API. Uh, so right now this API is on the published state. Uh, let's say if you uh, create a new version of this API, you can deprecate this uh, uh, API and uh, publish the new, new, move the new API to the published state. So uh, these life cycles are uh, this life cycle can be uh, customizable according to the bank's need. If you don't need these few states, you can remove and you can add your own states. And uh, here it shows the uh, different API versions. Uh, for these APIs, I have uh, published only the 2.0.0 API version only. Uh, if, if when we are uh, uh, creating a new version of this API, this uh, WS2 Open Banking Solution had the capability to uh, send the notification to the third parties who are already subscribed to this API. Um, um, and uh, here you can provide the uh, documentation uh, and you can see some few analytics who are the active subscribers and uh, how much is the API calls. You can see those information as well. Uh, as we, as we, as you see uh, in the API store, uh, we have provided some uh, alerting capabilities to the uh, API developers as well, so they can configure these uh, alerts and get notified uh, via an email if something goes wrong. And uh, if you find uh, if any uh, third party is misusing uh, your APIs, uh, you can temporarily uh, block those. Uh, a third party application developers from this UI. Uh, and and uh, we have provided some analytics also to the uh, uh, API developers as well. So the, they can uh, 
uh, compare uh, the API usage and uh, they can see how how the APIs have throttled loud and uh, they can see what are the fault invocations and uh, they can decide uh, based on that they can think how they need to uh, improve their APIs. So we have provided uh, analytics for the APIs, applications and subscriptions. So um, those are the capabilities that we have provided for the uh, API developers. And um, another requirements that we need to think uh, about is how we can integrate the uh, internal and external banking system with this open banking platform uh, to uh, expose the data and services to the outside. So uh, some uh, banks uh, can be used, the, uh, different uh, banking systems can be uh, used different uh, transports and uh, different message formats like JSON, XML. So uh, we need to think about uh, whether this platform can be integrate any type of uh, uh, message format or a message transport so then it will be easy for you to uh, integrate your systems uh, as i said earlier there are a number of um, users involving uh, with this banking platform uh, mainly the bank staff third party users. and the bank customers uh, if we think about the bank uh, bank staff also uh, there can be different types of uh, people uh, let's say uh, we should provide the uh, access to the we need to provide the external care portal we need to provide the uh, access to the to that only we, we should provide the customer care officers to access the customer care portal. So likewise, uh, we need to think about uh, how these users' roles and permissions uh, we need to uh, manage within this platform. And at the same time, these uh, different types of users can be reside in uh, different uh, user stores like LDAP, Active Directory, or the JDBC. So we need to think about how easily we can integrate those users to this uh, platform. And uh, with all of these, we need to think about the data that is passing through the whole platform. Um, so we need to uh, look at the API analytics, uh, how the how the how our APIs are performing, and uh, based on that, we can take uh, different decisions to uh, improve our whole platform. And uh, we need to uh, look into the. The uh, data that is passing, so then uh, we can identify what are the business insights, um, uh, what are the business insights to improve our business, and uh, we need to think about uh, how we identify if there's any fraud is happening. Uh, if your bank already have a fraud detection capability, so we need to think about how we can easily integrate that solution to this platform. Uh, and uh, the last thing is the reporting. Uh, there should be a capability to generate the reports uh, according to the bank's need to provide uh, the reports to the bank managers, third parties, uh, and to the customers. Likewise. With uh, all of this, uh, when we are implementing this uh, open banking platform, uh, we need to uh, think about the customer experience. Um, if you look at the uh, strong customer authentication flow, uh, so as you see on the demo that the third party application um, uh, redirected to the third party application to the bank interface, then the bank interface to the, again to the third party applications. So there, uh, there should be easy navigation and it should be really simple and all the screen should provide the required information for the bank customers to get the decisions uh, so uh, likewise we need to think about the uh, how would be the use experience um, it, it is not about the strong customer authentication flow the, we are providing the API publisher API pub, uh, store use interfaces customer care portals and uh, we provide some alerts to different types of users uh, if it, it can be via email or SMS. So what are the information that we are providing to those, uh, uh, 
those alerts. And uh, when we are send, providing uh, error messages, there should be a proper standard. Uh, when a third party uh, invoking an API, if, if we can't provide the required data and if we want to provide the error message, so that error message also should be a, in a proper standard. So we need to think about all of that uh, when thinking about the customer experience. If the uh, expectation, if we are unable to meet the expectation of them, uh, the no one will come and use the products and services that we expose through the open banking platform. Uh, there, there are a few operational requirements also that we need to think about. Um, that is uh, how, how we keep the whole platform uh, available all the time and uh, how we, uh, uh, whether that our platform provide the uh, re expected performance even during in the peak times. Uh, if not, the, the services that the third party application provide to the end user will not be uh, reliable. So we need to think about how we achieve the high availability and the performance. And uh, we need to think about how we properly uh, test the whole platform. Uh, we might need to do uh, uh, functional testing, integration testing, security testing, and stress testing likewise. Uh, we, we need to think about how we uh, properly design those testing, uh, especially when uh, considering the stress testing, we need to uh, think uh, how we uh, uh, replicate the real user environment, real banking environment, and uh, uh, do the uh, stress testings to uh, identify the issues and make the obstacle-free uh, open banking platform. And, uh, uh, it would be really good if the bank can provide the testing facility for the third parties. So then the third parties can uh, try uh, our APIs that we are going to expose. And uh, so then uh, we can uh, identify the issues that can be occurred uh, uh, early and uh, fix those. Uh, at the same time, it gives another uh, benefit for the banks uh, when the third parties are uh, start using our APIs, uh, they will give the feedback. Uh, so based on that, the bank can uh, think about how to improve the APIs and provide a better experience for the uh, third party application developers. Uh, and the next thing is how we uh, resolve a problem uh, when something goes wrong. So we, are, we should uh, define a uh, process, uh, how to identify the issues, and uh, if the third party or a bank customer identify an issue, then how they uh, inform it to the bank. Uh, so we can think about to uh, provide the online support or the ticket management system. And uh, we need to think about uh, what is the SLA that we give and if the SLA is violated, so how we resolve those, uh, how they can escalate those issues to the upper management. And uh, so likewise, we need to think about a whole uh, problem solving process and we need to properly document it. And uh, we should uh, uh, train the staff to handle these results. And uh, uh, we should clearly uh, explain this to the uh, external parties as well. Um, the, the last thing is the change management. Uh, let's say uh, the bank want to upgrade the whole open banking platform or the bank might need to uh, create a new version of the already exposed API. Um, and uh, the, the bank might need to upgrade the infrastructure, software, configurations, so likewise. So when, we, when the bank do a, some kind of a change in the platform, uh, it can be affected to the uh, third parties who are already using our uh, using the APIs that we have exposed. So we need to uh, properly identify what is the impact that uh, the third parties can uh, can uh, have occur, and uh, we need to uh, properly properly uh, identify what is the process, but how we can mitigate that uh, issues, and we need to com properly communicate it with. Uh, it to the third parties. So for that also, we should have a proper process. Um, okay. Uh, so I have just another three slides actually. <laughs> uh, so uh, with 
so those are the key requirements that, that uh, we have uh, we are mainly uh, considering when thinking about the open banking platform uh, so considering those we have developed the w store open banking solution uh, so uh, these are the key features uh, from the from all the capabilities that we have uh, i think uh, you uh, showed this uh, while uh, during the Sejika's presentation also. So right now, uh, I'm not going to uh, go through all this, but uh, I want to say that uh, currently uh, we have uh, implemented this WS2 open banking solution uh, 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 considering the open banking of the UK specification, Berlin group specification and the state specification. And right now we are working towards the uh, Australia CDR specification and uh, we have developed uh, this uh, whole uh, solution on top of the WSO2 products uh, which provides the API management capabilities, identity and access management capabilities, integration capabilities and the analytics capabilities and uh, those are uh, fully uh, tested and used uh, by the different uh, customers in all over the world and those are uh, easily extendable so because of that even though uh, your country or your bank doesn't have a doesn't follow a specification uh, still our platform can cater your requirements um, if you want to uh, further know about the w store open banking uh, solution you can come to our website and there yeah, you can see uh, what we have done and what our roadmap information and uh, from this URL, you can see our WSO2 documentation. Uh, uh, actually, our solution is a closed sourced uh, solution, but uh, we have exposed our uh, documentation, uh, especially uh, the UK implementation and the Berlin implementation. So you can uh, come and see uh, what we have done so far. And, uh, we have an online demo site. Uh, you can come here, openbanking.wstu.com. You can try our uh, sandbox and uh, you can see whether uh, this fit for your uh, need. And uh, if you want more information, please contact us through the open banking demo at wstu.com. Uh, so that's it for the uh, workshop today. Uh,